Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The older you get in ministry, the fewer your friends become. When you get into the full mold of the calling, you understand the consecration that drives it. The measures of imprisonment into which the Lord will bring you in order for you to be accurate in your service delivery. When you look around you, your acquaintances will be few. If you have up to six of them, you're a lucky man. Yeah. Many people are not out to serve the Lord. They want to profit from his name. His name is, is, his name is like ointment, poured forth. So you can sell some of the ointment. need to travel across sea and land to meet a man that loves Jesus. That's what I found in Pastor Sunday. <laughs> in fact, I had to do, I had to carry out a survey to know where his house was before I bought a house. I bought a house close to him. I like this man. I like him. <laughs> we, will, we will take the gospel of the kingdom to the nations of the world. Thank you so much. As you were ministering, I felt uh, like a shower come upon me. Only Theophilus Sunday does that. Only, only Theophilus. Say, who, who is this? Ah. God is here today. We need to maximize his presence here today. Thank you for the privilege of serving you, of speaking for you, standing to fight in your name, Thank you for the opportunity you have given us, even during the course of this conference, to labor towards your enlargement in the hearts of men. I pray tonight that you will look kindly upon everyone that took time to come into this place to seek your face, that your strong hand might descend upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Pastor Sunday. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for this great church that you have raised in this land. Oh, we ask for acceleration in the things that you have called him to implement. That much more grace will be granted unto your servant, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. 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 All right. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Revelation chapter 22. Rivers of, of living water. And it showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there a tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Hallelujah. 
when God was creating the heavens and creating the earth, the idea of these two dimensions was that God wanted to be reflected through two habitats. And so what he did was that he himself decided to limit himself to the spirit dimension and is domiciled in the heavenlies. He decided to create man after his image and to domicile him in the earth. The idea is that the earth is supposed to be a mirror image of the heavens. And that man that is the warden of the earth will be in alignment with the authority of God in the heavenlies and the will of God as it is established in the heavens will find expression upon the face of the earth. So, if you study the book of Revelation and you see the guided tour that the angel took John through the heavenlies, there are 12 things you will find, 12 platforms that provides possible interaction between heaven and earth. The first of such platforms that you will find is what we call rest. 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 Rest is a concept that is established in the heavenlies. In fact, every spirit being is supposed to have an allocation of rest. And so if you go to the book of Exodus, I believe, chapter 31, verse 17. Do you have it on the screen? Exodus 31, 17. It says, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. I'd like you to take note of the, those two words, rested, refreshed. In fact, Sabbath, that is established in the natural, is a pointer to that rest that has been secured in the heavenlies. In fact, only demonic spirits do not have an allocation of rest. So the Bible says that when an unclean spirit is casted out of a man, he goes about in dry places seeking rest and find it now. Because there's no allocation for rest for demonic spirits. Are you still with me? You are not a spirit, but you have a spirit. And that spirit that you have, there's an allocation for rest for that spirit. And that was what Isaiah said. I think in Isaiah chapter 28, I believe, where he said, with the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue. Give me that scripture. With the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue will I speak unto these people. This is the rest that I will cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. The same words he used there. Rest and... Oh, you are not ready for me today. You are not. You are not. We have to run because of the time, and there are things God wants to do today. So, are you there? Yes, With the stammering of the lips. And another tongue. He's talking about speaking in tongues. He said, will I speak unto these people? And on the strength of that, next verse, next verse. Oh, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refresh. Yet, they were not here. There's an allocation of rest. Have you ever been in turbulence and you began to speak in tongues? Well, if you speak long enough, the capacity you build inside will be able to, it will sustain the infirmity. You know, the Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain it. It's a infirmity, but a broken spirit, who can bear? If you build sufficient capacity inside, the storm and the tempest that is coming from the external environment will lack the ability to manipulate. You can, you can, be, at, you can be positive in the midst of that pressure because you have rest on the inside. It's not the water that is around the boat that makes it sink is the one that enters. 
This is the rest that I will cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. Second interaction, you will notice that in this scripture there is a tree of life. It was from heaven that God took that tree of life and transplanted in the garden of Eden. Because these two realms were supposed to be self-supporting, self-sustaining, self-rejuvenating, self-propagating. Everything that made heaven heaven was supposed to be available and accessible from the earth so that the earth will be a mirror image of the dimensions of heaven. We are, we are still talking about rivers of living water. That's where I'm going. So he took that tree of life from heaven. And he came and planted it in the garden. And said that Adam should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because that tree will make him independent from God. And independence from God is the definition of death. Because he is the fountain of living waters. But if he eats of the tree of life, he will become born again. The divine life will be factored in him. And he will be sentenced to a life that is perpetually dependent on God. Are you still with me? Yes, Number three, which is my emphasis. The Bible says he showed John a pure river of the water of life that is in the heavenlies. It's at the bank of this river that the tree of life germinates. One thing I need to say about the river, as you will discover in a short while, it is not for drinking. Psalms 46, verse 4. Psalms 46, verse number 4. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Psalms 46 verse 4 says there is a river. He said the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the place, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. This is the reason why you cannot successfully achieve sorrow in the heavens. It's because there is a river. The river conditions the environment of heaven and it makes it glad. So when you hear the scripture says that God will wipe away every tear, it's not as if God has one handkerchief. Then he will visit you and then he will clean your eyes and say, do, do. That's not what it means. There is a facility that is installed in that city such that when you, it makes glad. Everything that you find in that ecosystem is gladdened by the reason of this river that is factored into that civilization. When you find people that can successfully be depressed, you, can, you find people that can successfully be anxious, you find people whose faith fails, because we have heart failure, we have brake failure, and then we have faith failure. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you find a man whose faith has failed and he begins to speak, begins to speak poison, it is because he has not been, he has not had the scent of, of this river. There is a river. Oh, and when Satan thinks that he has achieved the best he knows to do, he's not aware of the infrastructure that God has built around your life. You have, you have a system in place that has the capacity to condition you to be off limits to, the, to Satan's tricks. So the Bible says that there is a river. It says the streams whereof make glad. The city, the, the city of God. Are you there? 
It is this river I want to talk about. And when God created the Garden of Eden, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, give me Genesis 2 beginning from verse 8. He took that river from heaven and he planted it in the garden. Just like he took the tree of life from heaven. Uh, the, yeah, the tree of life from heaven. He planted one sample of that tree. He did transplanting. Are you there? He still took this river. He plugged it and he brought it into Eden and put it there. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Next verse. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Somebody asked the other day, if God knew that man would fall, why did God now tempt man by putting the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? I know some of you are asking, even though you are laughing, you are, you've been asking that question. Now, you see, there are categories of creatures in creation. Every creature that is built with an installed sovereign will must be given an opportunity to make a choice. It is this opportunity that was given to angels that a third of them fell because angels are created with that sovereign will. They can exercise their will, all right? And because of that, that level of civilization in the creative enterprise, they had to be confronted with the opportunity to make a choice. Now, listen to me. Worship is not worship if you don't have an alternative. If, if we are created like robots, that every, we are designed and wired just to, we just come like this, do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if that is the case, <laughs> then worship is not in view because we were compelled by superior power to operate that way. Just like we are compelled by gravity to stay on ground. Many times I know you attempted jumping. You would have wanted to, but it's not given unto you because of gravity. All right? So God did not create us as robots. He created us with a sovereign will. And the thing about the exercise of your will is that the lines of your development will be determined by how you exercise your will. The lines of your development. Because if he chose the tree of life, he would have become totally dependent on God. He would not have the powers to know between good and evil. If he wanted to know what was good, what was evil from God's perspective, he would need to depend on God for that function to come from God. So you'd be a creature that was perpetually dependent on God. But if, if he takes of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he will become independent from God there will be a wisdom that is available to him, which is not from God, that will give him perceptions of what is good and what is evil. Meanwhile, you must understand that there is a good that is not God. And that good that is not God is what was captured in the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The next time you hear, if it is good, it is God, just know that a human being is talking. Because there is a good that is not God. In fact, that's the reason why Jesus had to rebuke that rich young ruler that called him good master. What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? That's a long sentence. The only thing Jesus proved in that his presentation was good. Because he knows that good from God's perspective is, is different from good from man's perspective. It's the same word, but it has different meanings at different levels. And God will not want you to use the word good outside of the context of his definition of good. So he now said, there is no good but God. You know what he was saying? Don't call me good if you don't acknowledge that I am God. 
I'm not God because I'm good, but I'm good because I'm God. My, my goodness flows out of my godness. That's what he was trying to tell the guy. You can have all forms of good that there's no God in it. That is not my own good. Good is a big word in the kingdom of God. Good, good. Oh my God. You know, when God went to create in the creative enterprise, God was both an engineer and a spectator. When he finishes, he, he goes to create. Then he will step out of his creative mode to observe the thing that he has created. If that thing that he has created does not attain to the unit of measurement called good, God doesn't stop working. It must attain to good. So good has a deeper meaning with God. Uh, uh, he said, don't call me good if you don't acknowledge that I am God. Are you there? God continued that creative enterprise until after creating man, he, he stood back to look at him. Then he said, ah, it is not good for man to be alone. Man's state did not attain to good, which is a unit of compliance in the creative enterprise. That was the reason why he now went and <laughs> I know you, under, you are getting what I'm talking about now. Every creature that was given a sovereign will was put to the test. You will need to make a choice. It is worship when you had other options available and you decide by an act of your will to choose God. I choose God. You had the option of going with Shongo. You had the option of going with Ogugu. Ogugu can create thunder in dry season and kill somebody. Oh, you people grew up in Abuja. Ah, we had a choice, but every day of my life, I choose him. That's worship. There's an option. There's a wide spectrum of possibilities, but I choose him. I desire him. I want him. I'm sacrificing. I'm starving my flesh because I want to apprehend him much more. That's worship. Are you there? So the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to go every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Can you see the trees? The first one, the first category of trees are the ones that are pleasant to the sight. Set, that's aesthetics. Second category of trees are the ones that are good for food. Third category of trees, of, a, of tree, is the tree of life, which was in the midst of the garden. Fourth category, oh, I don't have time to tell you about the trees of the garden. The trees. The trees. God was ministering to his sight, ministering to his body and health, ministering to his spirit, to enliven living it. God made provision at all levels. Are you there? But the reason why the tree of knowledge of good and evil was there was so that he could worship now, the, the question I need to ask you today is, what do you choose? Can pressure make you to change your mind? Can situations make you change your mind? Can circumstances make you change your mind? If that is the case, it means you are not rooted, you are not grounded. You are not grounded. You have not, you have not made deliberate, daily, and intentional efforts to advance in the course of your conviction. So your conviction is not deeply rooted. So, so a tempest can shake it. Can you are not rooted? You are not grounded. 
And if you are not grounded, you cannot profit from your conviction. If you are not grounded, you don't, you don't have a reason to die. Because, are you there? And you, you know, you are, not, you are not here. If you don't have a reason to die, you actually don't have a reason to live. If there is nothing that, it, it, that, that, that maybe something confronts you and they say, leave this thing. If you don't leave this thing, we'll kill you. And you cannot stand your ground. Because your conviction is your reason to die. If somebody wants to take your conviction away, say sorry. That's not possible. That's a proof that you are rooted. It is when you have a reason to die that you have a reason to live. If you don't have a reason to die, your life is without depth. It's transient. Like, like someone that is traveling but doesn't have a destination. If the conviction is not deep enough that can shape, shape you to the point where you don't see your life existing outside of this reality, you have not started living. I would like you to go to the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and then find out the lifestyle of the men of faith. He said, what shall we say then? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Samson, of Barak, of Jephthah, and of the prophets who through faith wrought righteousness, subdued kingdoms, they stopped the mouth of lions, they quench the violence of fire out of weakness. They were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. He said, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured. Where I'm taking you to? They said, not accepting deliverance. They were confronted with a situation where they said, if you deny Jesus, we will we'll free you. These guys say, we don't accept your deliverance. It means they had a reason to die. Their conviction had come to a point where they were willing to die for it. That's the real meaning of the word witness, matus. A conviction for which you can lay your life to prove that, that it, is, it is true. That's matus. So if you don't have a reason to die, you don't have a reason. You don't have a very strong reason to live. Your pursuit is vague. You have not found the true path for human day, the journey of man. Are you there? Okay. Let me try to round up in the next 15 minutes so that we can pray. A river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it parted and became four heads. Now, notice that it is a river. One river. God took that river in the heavens and came and planted it on it. And he planted it in the midst of the garden of Eden. But when it was flowing out of the garden, it branched into four heads. Pishon, Gishon, Euphrates, and Hedekel. If we have time, we'll, we'll look into the meaning of these four names. Are you there? The, the next thing, yo, you are not with me. You are not with me. You are not following me. You are not following me. Now, bring that scripture. Restore that scripture. Restore it. He said the name of the first is Pishon. <laughs> now, you are using English pronunciation. The Hebrew pronunciation. Shh. Okay, let's use your own. Pishon. <laughs> that is it which compasses the whole land of her villa where there is good. Now, hold on. 
You are not following. <laughs> Let me reduce this syllabus. <laughs> now, see what the river does. The river is a messenger. And they sent it from Eden, sent it to Havila. The moment he arrived at Havila, it colonized it and began to erode the topsoil. When he eroded the topsoil, he found out the treasures that were buried inside. And in Havila is the land of gold. Next verse. And the gold of that land is good. And there is Bellinium and the Onyx stone. It was the river that unveiled gold, Bellinium, and Onyx. You get it? Next verse. And the name of the second was Gihon. The same it is that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. Next verse. And the name of the third is Hedekel. That is it which goeth towards the east of Assyria, the fourth river is Euphrates. If we have time tomorrow, we'll, we'll probe into those names, what they mean. So it is this river is the triple tree that is used to unveil the treasures that are hidden underneath the topsoil. So it is sent to recover. It is sent to unveil the potential of the territory. Unfortunately, when the fall of man came, the Bible says that in the days of Peleg, the earth was divided. And the division that is spoken about there is divided into political estates. So nations began to claim this. This river was for the whole of humankind. It was hijacked. Because it was hijacked, the course of the river could not finish the errand for which it was sent. The fall of man brought a distortion of God's intention. So the scripture from whence our team was taken in the book of John chapter 7 that I want us to read because we'll read it in all the sessions that I'm privileged to add my own little quarter to the body of truth that the Lord will be dispensing in our midst. This is it. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of what? Okay. This is the thing. Because of the fall of man, God had to take that river. He decided to plant it inside the heart of those that believe on him as the scriptures have said. If we have time tomorrow, we will look on the meaning of believing on me as the scriptures have said, not believing on me as you have intended, eh? not as you have designed, not as you, as you want, but as the scriptures have said. So if you believe on me that way, then out of your belly. What I wanted to do in the Garden of Eden that the fall of man frustrated 
the same river will be caused to flow from outside of your belly. Are you following? You see, like I said, the mirror, the earth is supposed to be a mirror image of heaven. So the presence of the river of life will now come from the spirit of anyone that believes on him as the scriptures have said. The first thing that this river will do, are you there? You know, the river is coming from inside, out. So it means it has terrestrial effects. It also has internalized effects. This river that is coming from inside of you is the system that God puts in place to ensure that the things that he has hidden in your spirit are perpetually eroded until the treasures come out. So the first question I need to ask you, how many of the treasures that God has buried inside of you have you realized? I would never have known that God can make a man speak. If not that I was born almost down. I could not communicate, could not speak. It was the river of life. It was the river of life. It was the river of life flowing from my vessel that restored my ability to communicate. In the plan of God, in the program of God, I was supposed to be his spokesman. And I was born with an impediment. Hallelujah. And I was wondering if God wanted me to speak so badly for him, why did he allow me to come out like, you don't understand the potential of the river. We will experience a little of the river in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> This river, I know it. She stirred it up while she was worshiping. Hey! And any time, it doesn't happen very often. So any time I have the opportunity to bathe in it, I, I, I surrender completely. And the stirring was intense. The river can unveil. The river can unveil. Before we talk about uh, uh, the aspect of the river that begins to affect the territory, begins to affect the environment, begins to affect your office, begins to affect your children, begins to affect people that are around you. Before I go into that, that's for tomorrow. But for today, we need to explore the aspect of this river that has capacity to unveil the treasure. There are treasures hidden in your recreated human spirit. In fact, according to the scriptures, you cannot even serve God except God gives you a gift. So they are, God is aware of the fact that you, 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 don't, you don't have the capacity to pay for everything that is made available to you. So there's an economy of gifts that God makes available. And he domiciles it and deposits it in your life. But you see, those gifts can be there dormant without discovery if you decide not to open up the channels. There are channels that must be switched on. There are channels, tributaries of grace. See, in the Garden of Eden, it was one river that he planted that began to branch into many branches. But in you, the Bible says it's many rivers he planted. There are many streams inside. I've seen a few streams flow out of my spirit, man. And I knew this is, this is God. This is not me. I've, I've seen a few streams. Oh, where Jesus will come. And you know, the Bible says he gave some to be pastors. He gave some to be teachers. He gave some to be prophets. He gave some to be evangelists. I've stayed long enough in my walk with Jesus Christ. 
And I knew when the only grace I had of my life was the ability to teach. And after a while, he gave. And he keeps giving. And he keeps giving. And my capacity began. There, there, there was a day I was invited for a crusade to preach. And when I stood on the pulpit like this, the anointing lifted. Because then the anointing was not for crusade. It lifted. I sang. I worship. The normal things we do to bring the anointing, the anointing didn't come. So I, I, I struggled. I'm not sure anybody gave their life to Christ. So I now told the evangelist that are among our ministers, I will not follow you guys out again. One day we were in prayer. He did prayer. That was when he gave me that gift. Today I'm stronger on the crusade ground than I am in conferences. Stronger. You need to see me there. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> some. He gave some. Another stream entirely that is different from the stream that I've known began to flow out. Oh. There are some countries that um, you really need to have established that stream for you to mount a crusade podium in those countries because of the density of witchcraft. I have been privileged by God to, to, to minister on huge platforms in those nations. Finish ministry. Somewhere in Southern Africa, one of the Southern African nations, and was coming down from the pulpit, they told me that, oh, even though the stadium was full, there were people outside. So they said, there are about 12,000 people outside. Can we just go outside and pray a general prayer? I said, hey, that's, that's great. When I came out, some women, they were like, 13 to 15 women, they, they were saying something in their local dialect. So I now asked my interpreter, what are these women saying? He refused to. I, ins I insisted. What are they saying? He said the, the, bitter, the most bitter curses that witches can concoct are the curses they are causing you. He did not end there. I went there to fight. Yes. The demons that, that moved them to curse me, they, we, we casted them out first and, and they with, with strong cries, the demons came out. When the demons came out, miracles became cheap. Those were people that were revered. They were, they were feared, humiliated by the power of God. I was not like that before. I was a simple Sunday school teacher with a Bible study outline to teach. But you see, as we began to go on, we began to find other streams and to find other dimensions. There, is, there are dimensions that we have not touched. That God has said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. See, a believer should not fight for relevance. If you explore, if you explore, the things that God has. He, he didn't create any one of us to be. Oh my God. I pray this will enter you. Yeah. We are going to pray. For 15 minutes. The theory has ended. The river I'm talking about. I know it. I know that river. I know that river. Things began to take place outside. The, I had no micro. The microphone was not working. We had wandered away from, from, from the distance that the transmitter can pick what I'm saying. It was with my normal voice. Normal voice. We took crutches from six women and they began to walk. Two crutches from them. Two crutches from this one. I took from this one. I took from that one. I took from this one. six. And all of them began to walk. People were shouting. People were calling Jesus. People, we had no microphone. It was just a stream. I came close to, I came close to one place. As I was coming close, the people there just, no microphone. Fell off. Deliverance began to take place. No microphone. It was a stream. You are going to stay up.
There's something you need to stay up tonight. Because Pishon, it encompasses the land of Avila. It is the system through which the gold that is therein is made manifest. We are going to pray in a moment of time. Oh my God, just let that river, let it go forth. It is in meetings like this. Most of the things I contacted, it's in meetings like this. The healing anointing, it was in a meeting like this. The river was flowing. The river was flowing. The river was flowing. We were ministering to God in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. And then I felt a sign on my right hand. And the Holy Ghost said, this is the healing anointing. I will never forget that. In a place called Ijaniki in Lagos. He said, this is the healing anointing. Can you stay it up right now? This moment is your moment. Don't allow the person by your side to seize this moment. I have experienced moments like this. Moments like this. Moments like this. Hey, come on, Rasito. Ile te Sambre Maya kula, maya kula, zeminente kesketuli masaketalia, ubre bobo siko samati zandele. <laughs> that the river within us, my God's fault, my God's fault, my God's fault. They are things you have deposited in our spirit, man. They are seeds that you have sown. Let the river that comes to water, the river that comes to unveil, let it flow from my vessel. Let it flow from my vessel. Oh, kile do boroko santeli, jamekai la sobre kateli, bande kuse sante kulia brama kantala, raba baba bosi keke bobola, rabuske to mina kateli. Yabakonde Babasika, Prasketomina Kuria, a Bisa seal, a Bisa Salebonde, a Bisa Sikatala, a Bisa Mantalia, a Cabante Kude Babalata Mansali. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baba <laughs> Baba yeta, Baba yeta, Baba salelante, Baba yeta, Baba siko brenta. The gold can be revealed, the precious stones can pop up, and your life will take a new shape altogether. Hele hele hele, pura Baba satema. Hele 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 hele. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I see a ladder dropped from heaven. And I ask the Holy Ghost, what is this ladder? 
He said, these are passageways that I will allow men to climb into heaven. These are passageways through which I will summon men to come gaze at the ways of heaven. He said, these are passageways through which I will invite men. Right now, there are four such ladders that I see in this auditorium. Oh. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. There are people in our midst that God will begin to invite to see the spectacle that is in heaven. Some of you will touch the anointing that makes that happen. Father, in the name of Jesus. You have heard our prayer as we desire to be more intimate with you, to know your ways, to know the way your spirit functions, to know the way the heavens are administered. And in response to our prayers, you have dropped four ladders because you are inviting us to stand before you in the heights of glory to observe the splendor and the wisdom behind your justice, your judgment and your equity. There are seven people in this place. There are seven people in this place. And God is calling you higher. He's calling you higher. He's calling you higher. He wants to show you secrets. Such things that you do not know. Such things that are beyond your understanding. And as I speak to you right now, the hand of God will begin to come upon those people. There are seven of them in this auditorium. There are seven of them. God wants to invite. Oh my God, it's strong. There are seven, seven of them. There are seven of them. The anointing of the spirit, it comes. There is a blessing that God is putting upon your life because he wants to invite you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. These seven people have been promoted. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can you be silent? No, I'm not talking to you. Now, the angel of the Lord will move in the congregation. These seven individuals that have been promoted, there is something you need to receive. And it will be so tangible, so tangible, so tangible. From my left hand side to my right hand side, to the back of, oh, so tangible, so tangible. You have been brought into another estate, into a higher ranking. But so tangible. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming. Oh, there's even someone that will feel an intense heat will come upon you. God is, is elevating you. Grace. Grace is being. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes.
Yeah, he's putting some things into your hands. He's putting some things. Putting some things into your hands. Putting some things. There is a young lady, a young lady in this place. There's a young lady. You have found favor with Jesus. You have found favor with Jesus. You have found favor. And a fire will come upon you in the next 21 seconds. A fire will come. 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 A fire. There is a flame from heaven. This flame, this, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. There is a lady. I can see you are wearing a robe in the spirit, a blue robe, the robe of the prophets. As I speak in the next 21 seconds, in the next 21 seconds, a prophetic anointing will come upon you. It will be so heavy, so heavy, so heavy, so heavy, so heavy. Holy Ghost. Receive in the name of Jesus. There's a war cannot be weary. There's a run and not fail. Hey, so compela. Hey, so gloria cape me. Amila compeles. Ruka pepe nala. There's someone, there's someone. We are about to receive the gift of prophecy. You will begin to prophesy. The hand of God will come upon you. It will be so intense, so intense, so intense. There is a pain on somebody's body. God has taken it away. You can check for it. We enter into the Holy of Holies. If while I was ministering you felt one of your hands vibrating, come. If while I was ministering you felt one of your hands vibrating, that is. <laughs> You don't know why it's vibrating. It was just. There is something God wants to bring you people into. Oh my God. La mama ya ke Hey 
same again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. There is one of you that used to have a pain around your waist towards the back. Check for it, check for it. If you notice that the pain, that pain has gone, you, you raise your hand like this. Stand up. He sent me to you. You will see how your life will be fast from today. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Now, before I run away, I want to show you that this river is real. You don't need to believe me. You don't need to believe me. One of you. Okay, there are two now. Two of you. God will give you the gift of prophecy. Two of you on this. Hey, 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 
you can't you, you cannot fight it you can't fight it it will overwhelm you to overwhelm you it, it will overwhelm you God will begin to seize your vocal cord. He will begin to use you to speak his counsel. Grace will be strong upon your life. Grace will be strong upon your life. The gold, the treasures hidden in your spirit, it will break forth. Amen. Your value will increase. Amen. Your relevance will increase. Amen. Because of the strong hand of God that is upon you. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. We magnify your name. We we'll give you glory. Or someone came here with uh, a very terrible pain on your left leg. Hit the leg three times. Hit it hard three times and leave it. Before we share the grace, one of you will notice that that pain is no longer. Yeah, it's even going now. May the Lord's hand rest upon you mightily. In the name of Jesus. Now, three of four of you, okay, three of you in the choir. Huh? Just stretch your hand. Okay, yes. So he will begin to put something there. He will begin to put something in your hand. He will begin to put something. He begin to put something in your hand. He will begin to put something. He will begin to put begin to put something in your hand. He will begin to put something. To put something. Thank you, Father. Lord, as we explore this river in the subsequent days of this conference, let the intensity be stronger in the name of Jesus. Let men leave this place and say of a truth, you turned our lives around. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You can run back to your seat. God bless you. Wait, 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 wait. Stay where you are. Stand where you are. So the angel of the Lord, I, I saw that angel. Just stay where you are. It touched me now. It means he has not finished. There's one of you. The hand of God in 17 seconds, the hand of God will come on you. Strong. It will come. Don't worry, it will come. You are the one I'm looking for. It will come strong in 17 seconds. Show me the one. Show me that one. Show me that one. Show me that one. Show me that one. Show me that. There's a shackle of darkness that is breaking from your life. Show me. Show me. There's a shackle of darkness. It's breaking. It was used to tie you down, but today it breaks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now from today, you will see. You will see a sign. You will see a sign. You will know that God has accomplished something in your life. Lord, so let it be written. So let it be done. In Jesus' name. Yes, you can run back now.